So the topic we're going to cover today is very, very different from the general trend of videos that I make. Now, this is way beyond the high school um, curriculum. However, stochastic calculus, which is the study of stochastic processes and how calculus applies to that and all the, all the great things that come with it, it applies to finance, physics, all sorts of things, is incredibly difficult. But there are also things that I believe that high schoolers can know very early on, and it may help you get even more intuitive understandings when um, or if you take the you know course when you go down in college. So today, we're going to go straight into just how we take derivatives um, with stochastic um, equations and stochastic expressions. Now, the sum and difference rules and all those things remain the same. So in ordinary calculus, you have things like that the derivative of f plus g is equal to derivative of f plus the derivative of g. The derivative of f minus, and of course, actually, I should put a minus here, make a shortcut, same for the difference. Um, you had a bunch of derivative rules, like the derivative of a constant is equal to zero, things like that. What we're going to talk about today is a little bit different. Now, many of the rules stay the same. In fact, any rule that I don't really mention here is pretty much going to be ignored and is going to remain the same. For example, if I ask you to find the derivative of f of t and uh, added to g of t, and let's say those are both stochastic, well, the same rule is going to apply that this is just dft plus dgt. So there's nothing different going on here. However, there are some unique differences, and those differences are pretty hefty, um, especially when we get to like things like the product rule. So, for example, the product rule for stochastic differentiation is d of x t times y t is equal to x t d y t plus y t d x t plus dxt dyt. Notice what's different here. This section is the exact same from regular calculus. But this section is additional. It's from Ito calculus. So this extra term is going to force us to take into consideration the product of their derivatives in addition to the standard product rule that you know before. So an example of this would be, let's say I told you find the derivative of t times w t. w t is Brownian motion. For your reference, it's a very interesting process. Um, definitely go look at what that is on your own. But w t is going to come up a lot because there are lots of properties that we can use with WT. For example, in this case, what we're going to do is notice that, hey, this is just going to be DT, or sorry, let's start with T DWT plus DT or WT DT. So this is just standard product rule. But what we add from here is the extra term from here. So dx d dyt in this case would be dt dwt. Now, there's something interesting to note here. This term in stochastic calculus turns out to be zero. So all we're left with is still the ordinary product rule. Now, does that mean we ignore this term? Absolutely not. This is not the only case that's going to occur when you have differential problems. 
However, it is important to know that this property is extremely important. And so before I move on to the quotient rule, by the way, this is how you do the product rule, just in case you didn't know, the, there are some things that we should definitely know. And I'm going to put them in stars. One is that dt, write that better, dt dwt is equal to zero, which is also equal to dt squared. That's an interesting idea. And that dwt squared is actually just dt. Interesting. So, how do we, let, let's do a problem where we have to employ some ideas here with the product rule. So if I asked you to find the derivative of w sub t times w sub t, we can use the product rule here. So it's going to be wt dwt plus wt dwt of course plus and then it's going to be dwt squared because it's dwt times itself. Now on the left here we all, all we do is we just get dwt uh, wt dwt but we just have two of them these are the same and then we use that identity here and no we know from this above here, from this guy, that this is just dt. So that's an important thing to know here. In fact, understanding this in stochastic calculus will be a huge goal. Now, let's go on to the more scary part, which is the quotient rule. The quotient rule states that the derivative of x sub t over y sub t is just equal to, now here's a huge fraction that we're going to have to you know, go over. It's going to be y sub t dx t minus x sub t dy t minus dx t dy t. So it's kind of like the product rule how there's like, you keep the same idea from the original quotient rule, but you just add the product of the derivatives. y sub t squared on the bottom still remains the same. And then we need to do one more thing is we need to subtract x sub t over y sub t cubed and then square dy sub t. Wow. This is one heck of a formula. And you're right, it is one heck of a formula. Let me just move this all the way over here. Maybe that'll look better. So there it is, guys. Huge formula. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's say I asked you to find the derivative of t over dwt. To do this, you're going to get, no, it's going to be sorry, not dwt, just d, uh, wt. It's going to be y sub t dt minus t dwt minus, and then the derivatives multiplied together. And hopefully you're going to realize that this is just going to be an identity all over the square of wt minus t over w sub t cubed times the derivative, which is dwt, squared. There are lots of things we can actually do from here, which is nice. One thing we can do is notice, or two things we're going to do here, is notice that these and these are identities that we can use from up here. These identities still apply. And so what we're going to do is write that. So it'll be wt dt minus t dwt minus, and then this will just be zero actually. So we're just going to ignore that entirely. All over the square here, which we can also just write in simpler notation like that, 
minus t over the cube of Brownian motion, and dwt squared we know is just dt. And we are done. So kind of a long problem, but as you see, the identities are all very useful. And this pretty much sums up the stochastic, well, the stochastic differentiation um, rules that you have to kind of, you know, really, really understand. Some, uh, I guess, you know, interesting things here are that the, you know, identities um, that we use up here are kind of um, out of nowhere uh, if you're new to stochastic calculus. But even so, memorize what these are and then figure out figure them out intuitively on your own on another time. But what I want to convey is that high schoolers, yes, you can definitely do some stochastic calculus. You shouldn't be limited. In fact, a lot of people research this in high school. I encourage it. So hopefully this video helped you out a little bit. And for those who are just interested in stochastic differentiation. Uh, so hopefully this helped you out and see you guys in the next video.